My name is Hugo Bernier. Uh, you can find me on Twitter or on my blog. And today I'll be talking to you about uh, the adaptive card web part a sample that I created. So adaptive cards is an initiative by Microsoft that allows you to create uh, user interfaces that are you know, trying to really make the, the, the host of where your, your content is presented. Uh, so you can actually, as you can see on this on the screen now, uh, this is from the Microsoft uh, website called AdaptiveCards.io, and what they have here is they have uh, different, the same adaptive card that's presenting in different uh, different hosts, so in Skype or in different things like that. I recommend you go take a look at this, uh, but that's the web part that I'll be showing you today. The Adaptive Cards website has tons of samples. Uh, so you can see here it, what, what it does, it uses a JSON structure. In some cases, it uses the data structure as well. The cool thing about the data structure, it is pretty much any data that you get from any API. Yeah, you can just plug it in uh, to the, 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 the uh, Adaptive Card. And then using your, your template JSON, you can decide how to find the path uh, to your, your data, and you can present that data. Uh, so I'm going through here all the samples. There are some that are really useful, some that are not so useful, but it really goes uh, a long way to illustrate the the, the richness and the, the breadth of the, of experience experiences you can deliver with the rich cards. The uh, adaptive card site also has a designer that allows you to create your adaptive cards. So this is me. Just uh, I'm I'll just update here one of the adaptive cards. Uh, you know my flight is delayed forever because of this whole pandemic. Uh, but if I take this card now and I actually show it through different user interfaces, uh, you might notice that these experiences are very familiar because you're already using adaptive cards. So this is the web part. Uh, I like to create web parts that walk users through the, the process. So when you drop the web part, it says configure your adaptive card. And then uh, you have a choice here to pick a JSON uh, or submit a URL to the template. This functionality is actually something uh, that was uh, added minutes after I did my pull request to the samples repo by Paul Schaeflin. He actually added this functionality. It's it's a great example of again community people getting together and just doing some you know contributing together to make things happen. Uh, so what I'll do here is I'll go to the uh, Adaptive Cards website and I'll put I'll pick one of the samples from the Adaptive Cards website. It's the first sample that shows up. Uh, for those of you who want to follow along at home, it's the first sample that shows up on the Adaptive Cards website. And as soon as I do this, you see that uh, it creates this web part here that's uh, you know pretty simple. Uh, but the one thing that I did here is I made these Adaptive Cards. Uh, work. They're responsive. They'll work on whatever sizes you have, but they also work. Uh, they're designed to actually work on the background. Now, there is a little issue that I found with uh, the uh, strong backgrounds where the the buttons are the same color as the strong background, uh, and that's actually something that I'd love to to figure out. If anybody's an expert in semantic uh, coloring. Uh, help me figure out how to do a good difference here between the background color and the buttons. Uh, but it's also theme aware. So I'll uh, I'll spare you the, the process of uh, going through the, the, the themes here. But if I change this to a different theme, uh, you would actually see that uh, it's actually working on the, you know, the black background, for example. Now, the other thing that I can do is I can take a different sample uh, that uses uh, data instead. So because what I've done in this JSON here, if I show you the template, oops, if I show you the template here, it should let me do this. Um, what I'll, what I'm doing here is I'm actually creating a template that doesn't have any data. And what I'm doing when I detect that you're using a, a, a template that doesn't have data built in, it's using the adaptive card templating features. Uh, I kind of give you a little tip here. I say go and configure this uh, for you. So I'm actually going to turn on adaptive templating and then it's saying, hey, you need some data. I'm trying not to insult people here, but I'm always trying to help people figure out what's going on. So in this case, I'll just use some JSON that I extracted from 
Uh, I can't remember where I got this from, but as soon as they plug this in, the data is actually coming in. Now, what I've also done is I've actually used, uh, so if I actually change here the data just for fun to prove you that I'm not lying. Uh, so if I change this, this is actually Paul who helped me with this uh, web part. Uh, but I can also take some data from a SharePoint list or from a URL. So if I change the template here, this is a very boring template, but I'm just getting the ID, file name, the editor. Uh, and then if the demo gods are with me, actually, you know what? I need to do this on this one. So give me one second here. I'll pick a list. Uh, so I'm using the documents list and I'm using a view uh, called the top five. And if everything goes well, it should actually be pulling the data from a SharePoint list. Now, honestly, I wouldn't recommend you use the adaptive cards to create a list like this because we already have an awesome list rendering engine that does that. Uh, but if you wanted to do some you know, crazy user interfaces that are not possible to do uh, using the, the list templating uh, style, you can actually use the adaptive cards uh, to do that. And adaptive cards also support things like events. So I can I can have click events, I can have uh, submit events and, and things like that. Uh, the web part uh, supports that. And when I built this web part, and I'll show you the code in, in one minute, when I built this web part, uh, I actually designed it so that the adapt card control is actually a separate control that maybe if uh, if there's enough interest, I'll be submitting it to the uh, React uh, reusable uh, PMP controls. Uh, but I also added this uh, new property pane control, which is a view picker, uh, which I've also submitted to the, the React property pane uh, shared component library. So now if there's no questions, I'll, uh, and I, I'm hoping that Patrick Gervaisa, if there's any questions that are pressing, you'll let me know. But if there's no question, what I'll do is I'll go back to the code. All right. So the, the first thing to look at here is kind of the structure. And I like to take screenshots of my code just to help zoom in and, and do things like that. I hope you don't mind. This is real code, I promise. Uh, so the first thing is the adaptive card host web part itself. And really all it does is it's responsible for uh, for getting the theme and then calling the data if it needs to, uh, and then calling the adaptive card control that I've created. The first thing that we do if we want a web part to actually be theme aware is to just connect to the, the service scope to consume the theme provider service. And then the next thing we do is we extract the theme variant from the theme provider. And it it's not guaranteed that it'll always work. So it's important to uh, to do a try get theme. Uh, and in your code should always handle it. What happens if the theme is not provided? Uh, and then the, if you want the web part to redraw when your theme gets changed, it's important to have a, a, a handler for the theme changed event. In my case, when the theme changes, I just redraw the web part, but you could do any logic you want. And then when I call the adaptive card host, uh, you know, control a component, I pass the theme variant and it will be responsible for picking the colors it needs from the theme if there is a theme available. And then one last little trick here for the web part is uh, one of the things you may have noticed is I'm using a code editor control, which is available from the, the, the PNP reusable property pane controls. Uh, but, you know, it's actually loading uh, a whole code editor behind the scene. And in reality, I don't need that code editor any other time than when I'm showing the property pane. So instead of loading it every single time when the web part loads, what I'm doing here is I'm using a, a, a method called load property pane resource. If you add this to your web part code, it gives you the opportunity to load uh, to load components, and then um, it'll only get called when the property pane is called, which is great. It's, it's one way to reduce the, the, the load on your web part. So that's what I do here. I kind of do an import, uh, an asynchronous import, and then I'll just create a control just before it's displayed. Now, in this case, what I do is I actually create a private 
uh, variable, I store that so that I can display it when I'm ready to show the web part. So on the component side, it's what I'm doing is not very exciting. I'm actually saying, look, if there's a, if there's no template, scream at people. Uh, if I need data, you know, be helpful and tell people, hey, you need data. Otherwise, just call the adaptive card control that I've created. And uh, what I do here is I have uh, a action handler. Uh, if uh, you want to handle again a submit or a click or something like that, and also pass things like the theme variant and things like that. And I'm sorry, I'm going through really quickly through the code here. I hope you don't mind. Uh, so the adaptive card control itself is the one that does the magic. And I'm actually using a library from the adaptive card team, and I've just added kind of flavors to make it work in within SharePoint. Uh, the first thing that I do is I just initialize a new adaptive card, and then I tell it to use the fabric components. This is not something I did. The adaptive card team actually built in this logic to handle using fabric UI, or is it UI fabric? I always get confused. Uh, and then what I do is I just say parse the card, uh, and the card gets the uh, the template and the data. One extra thing that I do is because adaptive cards are actually very markdown friendly, uh, and it does not uh, handle a uh, markdown in your adaptive card itself. But the, the adaptive card uh, library does give you uh, a functionality. If you want to handle markdown handling, you can add that. So in this case, I use a library called Markdown IT, which grabs the, uh, the, the markdown and renders HTML from it. And then this is very cheesy, but what I do is I grab the theme colors from the variant, and I go in and I plug all the, the host configuration for the adaptive card so that I get all the fancy semantic colors and background colors. Uh, there was one, the success text uh, that I found was not exposed. You know, normally I should be able to type semantic colors dot success text. It's actually not exposed like the other ones. Uh, I suspect it's a either uh, oversight on the on the semantic colors side or on my side it happens. So finally, there's this one. You know, this is the bonus uh, feature, but the property field view picker. It's uh, it's that that thing that allows you to select a library, and once you've selected the library, it lists the views that are available to you. Uh, what I did here, and I'm not ashamed to say it, I copied and pasted the property field. Uh, list picker from the uh, React uh, reusable property pane controls. And I just added logic here to list the views instead of the uh, libraries. That's it for me. If there's any questions, I'll be checking the chat window. Um, back to you, folks. Fantastic. So another awesome demo. Thank you so much for that. Uh, very cool to see the adaptive cards and how they're being used. <laughs>